What's going on guys? Eric Pate here, back with another video, and welcome to my first episode of Aviation What If, where I'm going to be looking at near disasters or accidents that could have been avoided, get out as much information as I can, and we're going to discuss it um, about how it could have been avoided, and look at similar incidences like this, and look at similar incidences, and yeah, we're going to be looking at the Japan Airlines near made a collision primarily today even though we're looking at three other incidences because I think these other three incidences reason why I'm, I'm looking at these three is because I'll explain I'll explain when I get to each one so in the so in the 2001, so Japan Airlines flight 907 traveling from Japan Honda Airport was going to Naha Airport in Okwa, in Okinawa, Japan, and then and also traveling also to Japan was traveling to Japan was Japan Airlines flight 958 from Gamhae in South Korea to Narita Airport, which is also in Japan so um, the Japan Airlines 9 on flight 907 had was a 747 400 I believe or 300 um, I'm not getting in the video again because this is my home take taking this video uh, I'm pretty sure it was a 7, 4, 747 400 had 427 pass passengers and crew um, to be, if you want to give exact on how much of each, it's 411 passengers and 16 crew. In the, and on the DC-10-958, were 250 passengers and crew, 237 passengers, 13 crew. So, how the incident occurred? Anyway, if, if this accident actually had happened, it won't be the first collision that would well, had involved two planes, from the same airlines, because on runway three center in Detroit on December 3rd, 1990, Northwest Airlines flight 299 was taken off from Memphis. By the way, the other incident we're going to look at that that's a lot like the 1990 incident. I will go ahead and say that flight 299 already had was already zooming down the runway because he already had a clearance when a DC-9. On Northwest Airlines flight 942 at 1482 traveling from Detroit to Pittsburgh got lost in the fog and ended up on the runway. Same runway that the 727 was taken off on. Luckily there was only 8 deaths on the DC-9. No one got hurt on the 727. I'm actually, I'm actually going to make a whole video regarding this situation. A whole what if video regarding... This situation, uh, more focused on the 299 incident, um, flight 299. But anyway, um, the right wing sliced right through the right side of the DC-9. And if you were sitting on the right side of the aircraft, you either got killed or you got seriously injured. So yeah, uh, but anyway, so how the flights were traveling... Mm. Who's my who's this battery? We will pretend this is flight nine oh seven. And we will pretend this is flight nine five eight. So this is how the planes were traveling. Okay? They were traveling perpendicular. They Missed, just barely missed. I think I was, correct me if I'm wrong, tell me in comments if I'm wrong. I think they missed by 100 yards. Yeah. It was so close. It, this collision almost really happened. And, and how it just showed you was exactly how the Urban Linga mid air collision occurred. When Baskaran Airlines flight, 
was traveling from Moscow down into Devo to Barcelona with a bunch of school children on board. And then a Boeing 727 traveling from Bringa, Bergamo to Brussels. Well, so this one, the two planes actually did hit. Vascaria 92937, DHL-611, they actually did hit. The tail fin of the DHL ended up in the Vascaria TU-154, TU killing a total of 71 people. That is, that was everybody on both aircrafts. Now, if we do some quick math here. So, in the world's worst aviation accident, which happened in the small island of Tenerife, when Pan Am Flight 1736, traveling from Los Angeles to Grand Canary, was to stop over at JFK Airport in New York, was hit by a KLM Flight 4 805 traveling from Amsterdam Schiphol to Osagon to Grand Canary. Both flights had to divert to Tenerife because a bomb went off in at Grand Canary Airport. So what happened was the KLM pilot. So okay, we're gonna backtrack to the earlier in this video I said Something about fog. Well, this was in very thick fog. When a KLM pilot decided to grow a little too impatient, was in position while they were waiting for the Pan Am plane to turn off. Well, the pilot thought it would be a good idea on the KLM flight. Thought it would just be a good idea to go ahead and hit the takeoff power. Right when the plane started to rotate. It hit the top deck of the Pan Am. The KLM plane flew about maybe five more meters for crashing. Killing everybody on board the KLM flight 4805, which were 248 people. On the Pan Am flight, some people were lucky, but a good chunk of them, 335 people on the, of the 396 people on the Pan Am were, went missing when 61 survived. I have to say, those people felt lucky, those 61. But anyway, let's do some math. So if this collision actually did happen... Let's see. I mentioned we had 427 people that were aboard Flight 907. We're going to add the 250 people that were on board DC-10. Okay? I don't think... If this collision did happen, I don't think... I, I think this is an unsurvival... You know, both planes went down immediately. I would say this would have been an unsurvivable accident like no survivors so i can mention if this did happen not only would this have been the worst mid-air collision ever this would have been this beats the tenerife Airport disaster. But let's see how much by though. We would have had, had 200, 677 fatalities compared to the 583 fatalities we had in Tenerife. That is, gotta do some quick math real quick. Ninety four. 94 more deaths in a 
than what happened in Tenerife. Everybody who has survived a plane crash had had some sort of PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, and because the fact that they are scared to go ever go on a plane again. Some people have actually said they will never go on a plane again because they were because they might be too scared of just fighting a plane crash because they are too scared to travel by plane. I can tell you right now that if this collision happened that no, I think a good chunk of those people probably felt scared even after, and felt relief too that they did not end up in a plane crash. Now thinking about it, I would have said, I said this could have been an unsurvivable accident. I probably would have said that. Thinking about it, we'll say the tail fin of the seven forty seven did end up. In the middle of the DC-10. But we'll say somehow the 747 recovered it. As there had been a, some cases where a rudder will tear off of a plane. And the plane just finds the closest airport and land. Everybody's okay. We'll say that this incident did happen. The Japan 747 somehow makes it. Back to makes it to an airport or something. The DC 10 will probably be what it is still went down. So let me know which which um you guys want want me to touch on next. I might touch on the um 1970 DC 10 um cargo door incidents because I actually learned something about that the other day. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, favorite. Nice, it'll be awesome. Hey, Pete, don't do it. Hey, see you later.